What's good, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Community Voices. Um, today is a special day because we're joined by one of, what, personally speaking, one of the most talented forwards in women's soccer and soccer in general, period, to me. Um, she's a UCLA Bruin alum and uh, Liga Tigres own me official. How are you doing today? Welcome to Community Voices. Hi, right, thanks for having me. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm, I'm doing good. We're pushing through the week. I'm loving it. Well, look, I'm going to go ahead and get you too, because I know you're really busy too. Um, so I want to kind of start back in the beginning a little bit. Um, you know, you were a two-sport athlete in high school, which is, you know, but back then it seemed like it's like a normal thing, but to do two sports at one time and also to be as talented as you are at, at that sport so early is, is can be a challenge. I would love to know earlier on, like, you know, you were splitting that time between soccer and basketball. What was that moment that you kind of knew – that soccer was the avenue. Soccer was a sport that I really had your heart, and that was the one that you wanted to go to to inspire the uh, future, your future path. Yeah, I think soccer always had my heart when I was little, since I was like seven years old. Like I knew soccer was always going to be my sport, but when I was getting older, like I knew that I was an athletic person just in general. I was so competitive in PE. I was the one that was trying so hard, running the fastest, wanting to be all the boys. Like I was that person. So I really wanted to try a different sport to be like, hey, like maybe, you know, I'm, I could be really good at another sport. So um, basketball, my dad played basketball. So I love kind of the similarities between soccer and basketball. I think there's a lot of similarities between that. So in middle school, I played like a competitive um, uh, basketball team. And it was funny because they knew going into it that soccer was always going to be like the my thing. So if, so if my club team like had a game, like I was going to miss the basketball game to go to to the tournament for for soccer or whatever. And then um, so it was not really like a two like sport decision. Like I always knew that soccer was going to be my one, but just like on the side, um, basketball was something fun. And I was able to get a little bit of time off in uh, in high school to do my senior year and just play for fun. So um, it was just cool to get away from soccer a little bit. I love that. And I love that you kind of knew it too but like you didn't like you you were able to do it in a way where you didn't like burn yourself out on it too early so you still have that love love only got stronger instead of like damn it's starting to feel like work exactly exactly well also you know i'm gonna fast forward a little bit now because you know you came into the league and you went crazy like for lack of better words um you took league of mx by storm if you're come up the first uh form player ever to win a golden boot in that league like like I said, you went crazy. Um, how how was it? How like has playing for them inspired you to like achieve these levels of success? And just how different is it to play in the league? You know, um, how how different has that whole experience been? Yeah, I mean, going to Tigas was like definitely out of the box, and no one was expecting it. Um, getting drafted fifth, and then to be selling and choosing to go to Tigas, it was something crazy. It was a lot of pressure um different language didn't know who was there who was like I didn't know what to expect honestly it was mm -hmm. just kind of like a leap of faith um and I knew that you know I just had to stick to who I am as a person like I know everywhere I everywhere that I want to go like I'm going to be the best and that's my mindset like going in so I think mm -hmm. that's that's what the inspiration came from like everywhere I go I'm going to be remembered everywhere I go I know that I can I can bring something that will help the team and I think I think that was my like inspiration and, you know, being like who I am going into Tigris. So, um, cause I didn't know what to expect. So all I had was myself. All I had was, um, who I am as a person. What do I want? Um, I always said I always want to be the best player in the world. And I was like, if this is the, the team I'm going to be on. I might as well maximize everything that I can here. Fact. I love it. I love it. And I love that the, you kind of also like speak it into embracing that discomfort and being comfortable, like having faith that whatever that place is going to bring me, I'm I'm going to thrive in. So I love that you kind of spoke to that too. 100%. Now, uh, you know, it doesn't stop there because you continue to, you know, to continue going crazy as you do now. Um, and I think earlier this year, you got uh, the U23 call up for mm -hmm. the US WNT. What does it mean to be able to represent your country when you consider like the path that you're taking in the career that you're doing now? What does it mean to be able to like now represent and continue taking those steps to be like you said the greatest player yeah I mean as a kid the U.S. was the best that's what every little kid every little girl wanted to be on when it was the women's national team they're mm -hmm. winning World Cups winning the Olympics I'm just like this team loves winning like I love that too so it's just like from that age I knew that playing for the national team was always a privilege like it was always an honor and being in youth national team uh 
teams, like that's what every single time I went to camp, I knew it was a privilege. I knew it was an honor. And it's like, you always give your best. You always push because every other girl wants to be in your position. So you can't yeah. take that for granted. And I knew the U23 camp was another opportunity for me to challenge myself, to be around players who are like-minded for players who want to be on that full women's national team. Like it's important to surround yourself um, with people, with players who are like-minded. You can grow so much. You can know where you're at. So I think um, getting that call out for U23s, especially in Paris, I mean, as well as that, like super cool. I've never been to Paris. So it's cool as well that the camp was there and I was able to test my, my skills, challenge myself, be around amazing people, being, being around amazing players. So like I said, it's always a privilege. It's always an honor. I love that. I love that. And it's it's crazy the doors that can open from just doing the things that you love too. Like that's yeah. What to be said for that. Um, you know, we're talking about the greatness and you know everything that has been afforded to you and the things that you have accomplished. But you know, and I know uh accomplishments and success doesn't come without trials, doesn't come without struggles. Um, and I and I know, you know, one, you have the own the own your own issues that you deal with, whether it be on the field, you know, getting better physically, the mental challenges. Um, but I know that you know also this. You know, this professional as a professional female athlete, there's also issues within that that area of sports in general, too. That's also a whole other conversation. But um, you know, I would love to kind of know how do you kind of approach those issues um that you kind of face throughout your journey? Um like kind of what's your like best practice the way you approach those things so you can continue to just like be great and kind of continue to also just have like a positive mind state to continue going forward to continue continue going further. Um and also, like, what advice would you give to like the younger girls who are looking up to you, who you know don't who don't see those things, but also maybe need to hear those things so they can continue going forward in their journey? Yeah, I think um, I was just talking to, to someone about this, but what gets me past like my struggles and and the challenges that come like every day for being a professional like athlete is knowing what you want out of the sport. Like, I know where I want to be at, and that's always in the back of my my mind. I know the people who I do it for, and that's always on my mind. Like my family is my number one, like in life. Like that's that's who I do this for. Um, they sacrifice so much for me. And like, I know with that and where I wanna be at, which is the best player in the world, I wanna be considered one of the best is what drives me through every single struggle. Like nothing, nothing can get me, like can block me from that. Like as long as I'm motivated for my family and I have a goal and a vision of where I wanna be at, I think that's what gets me through. It's like, you know, I just got to trust the process. You know, everything, there's going to be challenges. There's going to be struggles. Like, that's just life. Everyone has dealt with that. But it's about knowing where you want to be. And I think um, I think that's the most important is knowing that in, in your mind where you want to be at. Because that will determine how much you work and how hard you want it. Um, so I think for the inspiration for kids, um, you know, my brand, Big Fish Energy, is always talking about strength, confidence, and empowerment. And I think being yourself is also another big thing that I feel like every kid should know. Like, just being comfortable with who you are, who you are as a person, who you are as a soccer player. Um, it can be different. A lot of people are not going to like you. A lot of people will like you. You know, you just never know who, what kind of people are going to come into your life to, you know, either challenge you or make you grow or, you know, both. So I think as well as having fun, like soccer uh, I tell every kid, like, if you're not having fun, like, there's no point. Like, this is, that's why you got into it. That's why you wanted to go to practice, meet new people, uh, meet your friends for life. Like, soccer uh, has so many, like, opportunities, so many amazing, like, memories that I have personally. And I think um, it just came from that love, from having fun. So as long as you're having fun and being yourself, I think that's what I would give to any kid. Mm, I love it. I, I, I want to let, let that breathe a little bit, because I think there's so much value in what you just said, because oftentimes in the journeys to get the things that we want, we want them so bad that we don't even reflect on why we're still running. Like we're so used to running the race to get to where we're going to that we don't stop and be like, yo, like, why am I, why am I still running again? All right, do I want to keep going further? Do I need to run in this direction? Like that, like what you just said is really, really key. That goes for any, whether you're on the field or in the office, really. Exactly. Like, for both. Exactly. I love that. And, um, you know, on that note too, you know, I know we're talking about, you know, just like the younger generation and kind of giving them advice too. You know, you also, you do a lot of work. You just talked about, you do a lot of work off the field too. Um, you know, when it comes to getting back to the community and things like that, especially with like young girls who, you know, have, are looking to get that experience, who look up to you, who want to, you know, be the next, not even be the next you, but be the best them in, in that respective field. 
Um, can you kind of tell us about just like your overall experience in like giving back to the community and having this impact? And, you know, as much as you want to be the best player, what is that same kind of uh, goal that you have as far as like the community leader that you want to be for those that for those that are upcoming next? Yeah, I, I, it's super important. It goes hand in hand with the the player that I am on the field. Like I, I want to inspire as many little kids, as many people as I can um, off the field. I think that my journey is so unique. I think um, the way that I think is sometimes not the traditional way of thinking. Um, and I think that like a lot of kids, a lot of people can benefit from that. So, right. so I try to, like you said, like reach out to so, like many different communities. Like I have so many different ideas <laughs> that like, it's hard because my time is always with soccer. So I have this like little time off where like, I'm always going out. I'm trying to do as, as many things and support as many teams that align with my brand. So for example, like Bermuda, I'm, my dad's from Bermuda. So I'm Bermudian um, and I'm from the States. So um, I got with a team, uh, the BFLA, like the, uh, what's it called? Bermuda team, an academy team in Bermuda. And I worked with Adidas because we have a charity. I'm a social charity piece. And I wanted to, you know, give them resources because that's the main thing in soccer. It's so expensive. Like just, yeah. you know, the, the traveling, um, the competitions, the tournaments. Um, it's hard to even get like backpacks and uniforms. So, you know, me and Adidas collaborated on getting them uh, uniforms, backpacks, soccer balls, just to make things easier. And they can use money for something else other than just playing soccer. You know what I'm saying? That's like half the battle. Um, as well as I just started um, collaborating with a team in Monterey, Mexico. So hopefully everywhere I go, you know, I, I leave a piece of myself. So now I'm with Alpha Training uh, based in Monterey. We haven't done anything tentatively yet, but we're in the works of, you know, getting more resources for them and making things easier because um, we we take a lot of things for granted, just like the basics, like I said, with uh, the Bermuda team, like just kits and soccer balls, cones, like, you know, that's just important. So right, right now I just went to their um, championship game. You know, this is like, this is so cute, like nine years old, eight years old running around, like just like butterflies, but it's like, it's just so fun. Like just watching them enjoy soccer. Cause that's where I was. Like, I just I had so much fun. And I think just me being there and, and the presence of me, like was huge. And making sure the interactions, like a big thing in Mexico is people coming up to you, little kids, like coming up to you, like, oh my God, like you're my favorite player. It's something that you're not used to in the States, but that like you are important, like, and they do look up to you. So just making sure that every interaction I have with people is so genuine. Cause I think that goes a long way as well, like in the community and just being yourself and just being, you know, who you are and just like having that interaction is important. Oh man, you know it's it's crazy to hear you even and speak on all that because I think too, everything that you're speaking to is literally like the personification of like a a legend, like the greatest, like the greats. You know what I mean? When you when you don't just solidify your greatness, or you don't you don't limit yourself to just how good you were on the field. You it wasn't just a game by game greatness. It was like a a game by game greatness it was like off the field it was in the locker room it was in the community so when I was here and there with this team with those kids that's like what mm -hmm. encompasses the best players so I, I love that that's like the mindset too I think that's such an important mindset it isn't just like the work that you do that defines how good you are it's like the impact that you have the purpose that you you go forward with and like the authenticity within it all so I love how you how you spoke to that yeah, I definitely wouldn't be maximizing like what I'm doing on the field if I didn't do that stuff off the field, I think. So, um, yeah, as well as I'm coming out with a book as well. So a children's book that awesome. be in the next couple of months, um, just talking about like the journey, like that there is going to be different paths and it's you got to take in every single different path and what aligns best with you. So that's like a little sneak peek of like kind of like my journey from UCLA to Tigris, like during that process. So. I'll be definitely giving back to the communities with this book and just getting them another perspective of who I am and like how just to get in my mind a little bit. So, yeah, I love it. And it's different. I, I love that that special approach to telling that story, too. It's, it's like, a you know, what I mean, it's like a special thing. Once again, it speaks to the authenticity of how you approach things like that is what really makes things stand out and like stick with people. Yeah, so I yeah. love that. Um, and, you know, we're talking on that note of community, uh, you know as community voices, um, mm -hmm. we know we're continuing the mission to, you know, for positive change and impact in the community. So we'll also be donating 10 K to the rebel soccer club, uh, located in Chula Vista, uh, California. Um, you know, 
They pro RBS provides soccer training and coaching for underserved communities located near the TJ I think is Tijuana, pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, Tijuana, yeah. A lot of acronyms. I gotta make sure I'm using the right one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yes, uh, located near the Tijuana border for boys and girls, youth. Um, we've been speaking about how important that is the whole time. I, I would just kind of love to know too, you know, we talked about how you see like the smile on these kids' face. I think I love how you said butterflies because it really looks like there's a bunch of like little beautiful kids, not necessarily having the game nailed down, but yeah. they're having fun and kind of getting there and making their progress and like first falling in love with the sport, which I think is the most important, like we said. Mm -hmm. um, and you talk about how, you know, it's, it's the kids touch you, they see you. Those are the moments that impact their lives, change their lives, even probably save some kids' lives just to have that moment. Um, I would love if you could kind of like speak to, you know, the importance of the Rebel Soccer Club mission and just kind of, you know, how they impact future generations and, uh, you know, working with them. Yeah. Um, first of all, San Diego is a very competitive uh, city for soccer. You have, you know, surf, you have big time slammers all along the coast of Southern California. And um, then there's Rebels, who's what's, they're mainly like Hispanic little team, very grassroots, community based. If they could do it for free, they would. Like, I know that for a fact. It's just about getting as many little kids as possible together to just enjoy soccer. And I know that for a fact because my coach, who used to coach me from, I would say, U7 through U11, um, is there, is a coach there. And he's the reason why I played soccer, like, hands down. Like, I can easily be like, that was my coach, and no one can take that away from me. Like, he's the one that made me fall in love, just – it's always about fun. He did not, he didn't scream. He never cared about tactics. He was like, I want to see how many scissors someone does in this game. I want to see how many nutmegs a player can do in this game. And um, <laughs> he is just so amazing. I can give him so much credit, but he is also based in, in Rebels. Um, and this team is just like, when I go to their, to their trainings, I'll go see my coach down there. And it's just like, oh, like, it's just so amazing that, and seeing the parents come, you know, with their chairs and just like watching them enjoy soccer just like reminds me so much of like um, how it was back then. But this this club is all about the community. It's like family. And it's just it's an amazing little club. that I'm glad that um, we can provide um, some money to help them grow bigger. They're just now getting players going to college. So it's amazing that now they're um, a team that can say, hey, like, not only are we like community based and we care about the player and we care about their well being, but also we can get them to college just by through through playing and the tactics and all that stuff from U eight to U eighteen. So, yeah, it's been it's amazing. You know, I think that this perfectly ties into my last question. Actually, I want to make sure I respect your time too. It ties into my last question. You talked about your coach, U seven to U eleven. How even now going back, you you have those special like moments and memories, and it's clear that that made an impact on you and it really you know like played it's played its important purpose and role in your career to be where you are now i would love to know as somebody who is still getting involved with the community and still making moments and still has bigger plans you know off the field what so far do you think has been one of those moments for you on the other side of things where you were you were that memorable experience for a, a, a kid or a youth um, what has been one of those most memorable moments that you've had with, um, you know, like the youth in that realm? With the youth, I think, I think, like I said, like just me going to like games and going to, to trainings is like what's most memorable, like to me, when you see that little kid running towards you and they're like, you know, are you running to me or are you running to your parent? Like, it's just that moment where it's just like, they just care so much like and you like are an inspiration to them like we forget sometimes like mm. how impactful we can be as human beings and you know every time I go to those trainings it's just like another wake-up call like you know what you're doing is being watched by other people little kids who were just like you and I you know I was scared to run up to like my idol or whatever but like I said like being interactive with them like knowing what position they are like just you know what's their favorite cartoon show like you know just keep me in light keep me in fun like I think that's what will stick to me every single time. Like all those little moments, I believe are so important in the bigger scheme of things and and the perspective of the sport and and how they see like, oh, I can be like her when I grow up. Like, you know, like she's, you know, she's so cool. I can go to her. I, I can talk to her, ask her any questions. And, and you know, I give them to them all the time. I think that's will always be the most memorable for sure. It's just the inter and those interactions. 
I love that, man. I love that. I, I love, like I said, I just can't, it, it, it even does something for me just to hear you speak about that levelness of like great athlete. Also just like being a great human being and not even like trying to be a role model on purpose, but by being a great human being and being there for the youth, you become uh, you know, a good role model and in, in the athlete that you are. So I, uh, I let, I, I took some, I took some pieces out of this day for sure, for sure that I was going home with and writing in my journal. Um, mm-hmm. Thank you so much for, you know, breaking down some of your time with us. I really appreciate you joining us for another episode of Community Voices. And, you know, of course, we look forward to just continue seeing you take that journey and those next steps progressively into being that best player that I can already see you on track to be. So thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, Thank you for the time and thank you for the questions. It's been amazing. Of course. Same here. Same here. Well, thank you, everybody, for tuning in to another episode of Community Voices. And we will see you all next time. Take care.